Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Uh, good, good evening, brothers and sisters of Sierra Leone. Um, shalom, most high in Christ bless you. To those of you who are tuning in, um, please get your pen and papers handy uh, as we're about to discuss important, the important topic pertaining to the scriptures that you'll never uh, hear about in your churches, that your pastors will never teach. Uh, oftentimes they'll tell you that you're washed in the blood of Jesus and all you have to do is say the name of the Lord one second before you die, as if you know when you're going to die. Uh, one second before you die, and that's all you have to do, and you'll be saved, and you will enter the kingdom of heaven. Brothers and sisters, we are here to let you know that that is absolutely not true. That that's is true. a myth. That is nowhere in the Bible. Now, many of you say you believe on Jesus Christ. Let's open up with John 7, verse 38. John chapter 7, verse 38. Many of you say you believe on Jesus Christ. You've got to ask yourself, do you really believe on Jesus Christ? And if you do believe on Jesus, what Jesus are you making reference to? Are you making reference to the white man with blonde hair and blue eyes whose picture is hanging up in your house right now? Are you making reference to the white man with blue eyes and blonde hair whose picture is in the church that you go to? Are you making reference to the white man with blue eyes and blonde hair whose image is in your mind? If you are, you are not going to get the kingdom of God. Yes. All right. Jesus Christ said this. Read. This is the book of John, chapter 7, and verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So Christ told us, he says, he that believeth on me, as the scripture, as the scripture has saith, out of his belly shall flow living water, okay, which is eternal life. So you have to believe on Christ as the scripture says. What does the scripture say? Let's read it. Because Christ left us the blueprint on what we must do to inherit eternal life. Matthews, please. Chapter 19, verse 16. Now, notice we're still in the New Testament. We are still in the New Testament. We have not even touched the Old Testament yet. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 19, and verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life. So what is being discussed? What is going to permit this young man to enter into the kingdom of God? And the same answer that Christ gives this young man is the same thing that he tells us. It's the same answer that he left us. Remember what Paul said in the book of Romans. He said the things written aforetime were written for our learning. So let's see what we can learn from, the, from this discussion that Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, is having with this young man. Read. To him, why callest thou me good? Mm -hmm. There is none. There is none good but one. That is God. There is none good but one that is God. Go ahead. But if thou wilt enter into life, but, keep. but if thou wilt enter into life, go ahead. Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. You hear what Christ told this young man? The same instruction that Christ gave this young man is the same instruction that pertains to us today. So if you're asking yourself, what is going to permit you to, to step inside those pearly gates of heaven, 
that's making it, it's you have to keep the commandments. Christ already left the blueprint. So what changed? Nothing changed. What changed was your mind. The Bible never changed, right? The Christ of yesterday is the Christ of today. Your yeah. mind, your mind changed. Why? Because you allowed the pastors to deceive you. You allowed the pastors to come in and 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 input false information into your mind that is contrary to the Bible. Now, is this the only place where Christ made mention about keeping the commandments? No, there's more. Let's get Matthew 5. Let's get Matthew chapter 5, and let's start at verse 17 around there. This is the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. So Christ says, think oh. not that I've come to destroy the law. Where is the law written? In the first five books of Moses. That's what Christ was making reference to. When you hear Christ talk about the law, he was talking about the words of Moses. All right. In modern times, we call it the Torah. Okay. That's the Hebrew word for it. Torah. Okay. Go ahead. Or the prophets. Or the prophets, which would include the Tanakh. Go ahead. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And everybody know. Well, you should know. I'm not going to say everybody know. Uh, that would be a fallacious assumption on my part to think that everybody knows because you don't know. But when he says, I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill, is making reference to the law of sacrifice. You read that in the book of Hebrews chapter 10. Christ came to fulfill the law of sacrifice. Remember, he was that lamb. He is that lamb that takes away the sins of the world. So Christ did not do away with the laws. The laws pertain to commandments. The laws pertain to commandments. So he's telling That's you, right. I did not come to destroy the commandments or what the prophet said. I came to fulfill. Fulfill what? The sacrificial law. Yes. That's right. Verse, verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. So Christ, Christ, Christ repeats himself. He says, till heaven and earth pass, which is a rhetorical statement because earth is still here. Earth will never pass away. In the book of Ecclesiastes, it tells you the earth abideth forever. So uh, those of you at the radio station, you're sitting in a building on earth. Me, I'm sitting in an office space on earth. He says, in, when heaven passed away, when you look in the skies, heaven is still there. Don't matter, don't matter how much bombs the white man drops, like the bomb that just blew up in Lebanon the other day, the heavens are still here. So yeah. he says, when um, earth and heaven pass away, shall one jot or one tittle in no wise pass from the law. So he's telling you the same way the earth and the heaven ain't never going to pass away. The commandments are never going to pass away. You see how simple that is? But because of confusion, because you allowed your Sierra Leone, your African pastors to come inside your head and brainwash you, you're thinking that the commandments are done away with. And you can just call on the name of Jesus one second before you die, and then you're going to get the kingdom. That is stupidity. That is the most dumbest thing I've ever heard. And, That's right. and we've all felt for it, including me. Because I was raised in Catholicism, which is a branch of uh, Christianity. Guess what? I used to believe the same thing until the Most High showed me the true men of God. And I opened up the Bible and read it for myself and realized that I was being lied to. So now the Most High is using the same men that he woke up to send to the continent of Africa in Sierra Leone on the AYV show now to wake you up. Okay? Because he woke us up. Continue reading. Verse 19. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments mm -hmm. and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. You hear that? He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. How do you break one of these least commandments? How do you break one of these least commandments? Notice what Christ is saying. Whoever shall break one of these least commandments, meaning some Commandments are more weightier than others. I'll give you an example. 
you have the commandment, the law on adultery, which is a major commandment. That commandment was, was so major that when you broke it under the times of Moses in the Levitical covenant, you were put to death. There was no forgiveness for that sin. Now you have a, a, a minor commandment, such as your beard being shaven. Let's take that. All right. It's still a commandment, but in comparison to the first, which is adultery, is not as great, right? So when the men shaved their beards or had their beards pulled off, what happened? Remember the time of King David, when King David's man um, beard was plucked off. Let's see. Let's get that real quick. What was the commandment for them? W were they put to death? No, they weren't put to death. Let's get 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel um, chapter 10. We're going to read uh, 4 to 5. Let's start at verse 3, 3 to 5. 2 Samuel chapter 10, 3 to 5. This is the book of 2 Samuel, mm -hmm. chapter 10, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And the prince of the children of Ammon mm -hmm. said unto Hanan, mm -hmm. their Lord, Thinkest thou that David doeth honor thy father, mm -hmm. that he hath sent comforters unto thee? Had not David um, rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city? And to spy it out and to overthrow it. Verse 4. Wherefore, Hanan took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beard. So this man, Hanan, took David's servants, shaved off one half of their beard, clean, right off. Go ahead. And cut off their garments in the middle. Okay, go ahead. Even to their buttocks. Even to their... Even to their buttocks. I'm trusting you that you're reading it right, David, because I don't have, yes, I'm, I'm not, okay. Um, yes, it said, and even cut off their buttocks. That's how you see American black men walking around today with their pants below their butt. It was a shame. It was a shame for black men to walk around revealing their buttocks. But now we do it freely in America. And that same spirit is jumping on our brothers over there in Sierra Leone. All right. So, it was, it was a shame for you to have your beard shaven or to reveal your buttocks. Read on. And send them away. Verse 5. When they told it unto David, he sent them, he sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. Mm -hmm. And the king said, tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown and then return. You hear that? So King David didn't put them to death. He said, you know what? Stay in Jericho. Don't come to Jerusalem. Stay in Jericho. Stay in Jericho. Tarry in Jericho until your beards be shaven and then be grown and then return. So the reason that I gave that, go back to Matthew 5. I just wanted to make a comparison between the law, why Christ said one of these least commandments. And there's no really least commandments, but some commandments hold weightier judgments more than others. But Christ said, if you break, if you teach men how to break one of these least commandments, you're not going to get into the kingdom of heaven. To be called least in the That's kingdom right. of heaven mean you're not going to make it in the kingdom of heaven. Because everybody will be great in the kingdom of heaven. Read that part again. This is the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 19. Mm -hmm. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Read on. But whosoever shall do and teach them the do same. Do and teach. Do and teach. The Bible says God is a man of, of, of actions. By him actions are weighed. God says who shall teach and do them action. Go ahead. He shall what? But whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called the called great in the kingdom of heaven the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven so what's going to allow you to be permitted into the heaven and be called great in the kingdom of heaven you have to do and teach the commandments you have to do That's and right. teach the commandments how simple is that this is basic english basic english but like i said before the confusion comes because you allowed, you allowed false teachings to enter your spirit. 
You allowed false teachings to enter your mind. Okay? Now let's get some more. Let's get some more. We're not done yet. We're going to stay right here in the New Testament. I want John chapter 14, verse 15. John chapter 14, verse 15. So it's extremely dangerous to believe in the doctrine that the laws are done away with. If you believe the laws are done away with, brothers and sisters, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. That means you are living a lawless life. You are living a lawless life. Go ahead. This is the book of John chapter 14, verse 15. Mm -hmm. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. If, if, two-letter word with a whole lot of meaning. If you love me, keep my commandments. So if, if you love God because you say you love God, if you truly love God, you will be keeping his commandments. Now, where, where are they getting this from? Where? Because remember, the New Testament was in Britain. So in all these Gospels, when we read about the commandments, they would have to be referencing the Old Testament. Guess what? The book of Isaiah says the same thing. Let's get um, Isaiah chapter 29, verse 16. Isaiah 29, verse 16. If you love me, keep my commandments. So if you're not keeping God's commandments, that means you hate them. Isaiah 29, verse 16. That's right. Come this is on. the book of Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 16. So whose, commandments, so whose commandments are you keeping? Are you keeping God's commandments or are you keeping men's commandments? Let's read. That's right. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Start up a little bit higher. Um, get me um, verse 13. I'm sorry, verse 13. Verse 13. Wherefore, the Lord said, for, for as much as this people draw it nigh, nigh me with near their me, mouth. Near me, near me. Yes. Draw, it, draw near me with their mouths and with their lips do honor me. But have removed their hearts far from me. And their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. You hear what Christ, what God is saying? God is saying, surely these people worship me with their mouth. How do you worship him with your mouth? I'm washed in the blood of Jesus. Yes. One second before I die, all I got to say is, Jesus, I love you. Throw your blood upon my bald black head and I'm going to get the <laughs> kingdom of heaven. Where do you guys get this from? It is nonsense. It is nonsense. Okay. The Bible has always been about commandments. God That's has what? always been about actions. That's why he said with their lips they honor me. Because it's only with your lips you honor God. But you're not doing the commandments like we read in Matthew 5. We just read that. Christ said in, in John chapter 14 verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. That's right. So where did they get that from? Well, their forefathers, the prophets, they said the same thing. Isaiah just said the same thing. He mm -hmm. said, with your lips, you do honor him. And your fear towards him is taught by the precepts of men. Hey, so, so, who, right. so who do you truly fear? Do you fear God, brothers and sisters of Sierra Leone? Or do you fear men? You fear men. What men? The white man. What other men? Your pastor. Because you're keeping their precepts. You have not been keeping God's precepts. Okay? Go back to John. Chapter 14, verse 15 again. This is the book of John. Chapter 14 and verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. So Christ said it plain and simple. If you love me, keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. Let, now let's see. The things change. The, the things change after Christ resurrected. Because we got to cover all avenues. Somebody might say, well, that was because Christ was on the scene. And when he died, he fulfilled everything, meaning the laws, uh, the commandments. You don't have to keep those. That's another simple thought. And we know that's a Christian ideology. All right, let's go to our forefather, Paul, please. Let's get the book of Romans, chapter 3. And let's read verse 31. This is the book of Romans, 
chapter 3 and verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? Because some of you, some of you will say, well, I have faith in Jesus. I'm washed in the blood of Jesus. I take the Eucharist, the little cookie, communion, every Sunday in my Catholic church. Uh, every Sunday I take, I partake in the drinking of the wine from uh, the Mazungu priest at my church. Some of you, okay. you, some of you actually think that's going to get you into the kingdom of heaven. Oh, I've, I had a uh, um, uh, reconciliation or a holy confirmation as a young child. Oh, I was baptized and washed in the bath of Jesus. Okay, read Romans chapter 3, verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? Go God ahead. forbid. God forbid. Go ahead. Yea, we establish the law. But he said, God forbid, yea, we establish the law. We establish the law, meaning we keep the law. We keep the law. Okay? The laws were never done away with as far as the commandments is concerned. Now let's get some more. Let's get uh, Romans chapter 6, please. This is the book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. For the what? For the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Come on. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the gift of eternal life, because Christ is what brings us eternal life, but eternal life is coupled with something else I'm going to show you soon. It says the wages of sin is death. But Christ gives us eternal life. Okay, now you got to ask yourself, brothers and sisters of Sierra Leone, what is sin? How could we sin if the laws are done away with? There should be no sin. There should be no such thing as sin if the laws are done away with. That's right. But we can still sin. We can still sin. That means the laws are not done away with. Because remember, uh, Paul was walking during the time of Rome, when Rome was in rulership. Christ already died, resurrected, and ascended to sit at the right hand of the Father. So Paul, who was chosen as a holy vessel, a righteous vessel from God to carry out his mission to the Gentiles that were scattered abroad, the Israelite Gentiles scattered abroad, why would he even make reference of the word sin here if the laws are done away with? Surely Paul knew that the laws were not done away with. Let's get the meaning of sin. First John chapter three, verse four. This is the book of first John chapter three and verse four. Mm -hmm. Whosoever committed sin transgressed mm -hmm. also the law. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. So if you sin, you transgress the law. People are still running around sinning today. Therefore, the law is still in full effect. So That's it says, right. whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Read on. For sin is the transgression of the law. You hear how plain and simple that is? For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is transgression of the law. Okay, now I want Romans. I mean, I'm sorry, not Romans. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. So we're still, we're still going over what permits us to inherit the kingdom of God. So, so far we touched on the commandments. Okay, and also uh, faith in Christ, which gives us eternal life. But like I said earlier, that's coupled. Faith in Christ is coupled with something else. And we're going to read it soon. Give me uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Knowing not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You hear what the Bible says? The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Go ahead. But, sorry, be not deceived. Be Neither not, for the be not deceived, 
brothers and sisters of Sierra Leone walking around saying that you're washed in the blood of Jesus and all you got to do is call on Christ at the last second of your death, the last hour of your death. This is not final destination where you, where you can see the signs of death, okay? Death creeps up on everybody like a thief in the night, okay? It says what? Read it again. Be not deceived. Don't be deceived, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Minor fornicators. Don't be fornicators running around, committing adultery, man sleeping with woman and not marrying her, sleeping outside of your marriage. There's all levels. There's all different levels of fornication. You have brothers and sisters who live in the outskirts of Sierra Leone who might be sleeping with animals in the countryside. Guess what? Yes, that's in the Bible. That's our people. Stop sleeping with animals. Stop sleeping with horses, donkeys, and goats, sheep. Go ahead. No, idolaters. Idolatry, African spiritualism, voodoo, voodoo, witchcraft. That is idolatry. You know what else is idolatry? Christianity, white man Jesus is idolatry. Yes, ba right. Baptist, Roman Catholic, Seven Day Adventist, Mormonism, Angelical. Uh, evangelical, Anglican, uh, Mormonism, uh, uh, Jehovah's Witness, Islam, all of that is idolatry. That's right. Everything, all religions is a form of idolatry, one way or the other. It forces you to what? Break God's commandments. Okay, go ahead. No idolatry. No adultery, go ahead. No effeminate. Effeminate men of Sierra Leone walking around with a woman's spirit on you. You are effeminate. You're very emotional, like a woman. You paint your nails in the dark. You do feminine things. You might have on woman's underwear right now as we're speaking, and nobody knows but you. Go ahead. No abusers of themselves with mankind. Tyrone laying down with Bobby. Nobody knows. Damn. They're homo, homosexuals in the closet, meaning it's done in the closet, it's done in secret. Well, it's done in secret to everybody else around you, but it's not done in secret to the one and living God. He sees it. Okay? So abusers of yourselves with mankind, that's homosexuality, lesbianism. You women are not off the hook either. You women running around, sleeping with each other, licking each other. Kissing each other. You're doing it secretly, but on Sunday you're in the church talking about 10% tithe. Jumping up and down, jumping up and down to where your wig is, is, is out of control. Your wig is doing a 360 on that bald head of yours. Then on Monday you run back. You run back to sleep with the woman again to commit more sin. Go ahead. No thieves. No thieves. Brother, stop stealing. Every time your boss leaves, every time you're at your, your job, you're slipping $5, $10 out of the cash register into your pocket. You young men, you young sisters stealing from your parents, <clears throat> stealing money from your parents. It says no thieves. Go ahead. No covetous. 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 To have an to, to, to have a un, a evil desire or want of something. So far, to, you will go to steal to have something. Go ahead. No, no drunkards. No drunkards, you brothers. Brothers and sisters who get drunk from sun up to sundown. <clears throat> you overdo it. God says, do not be drunks. You got to be sober minded. Go ahead. No mm -hmm. revelers. No revelers. Go ahead. No extortioners. Extortioners. You extorting brothers. Kidnapping. People who partake in kidnapping, extortion. Hold people or things for ransom. Threaten people that they threaten them, threaten their lives, threaten their loved ones so they can give you money, extortion. Use your power, use your power to get um to get unlawful gain. That is extortion. Go ahead. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. You hear what Paul said? You will not inherit the kingdom of God. Everybody who partakes in these things, who has, who has these attributes, I don't care if it's one second before you die. 
If you say, oh, I'm washed in the blood of Jesus and you partake in any of these lifestyles, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You will not be permitted into the kingdom of heaven. Okay. That's right. Read on. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. and, such, and such were some of you, but and, ye are watched. And yeah. such and such were, W-E-R-E, -E, past tense, and such were some of you. Meaning these men in the church of Corinth that Paul was writing to, some of them lived those lifestyles. Some of them were adulterers. Some of them were covetous. Some of them were whoremongers. Some of them were thieves. Some of them were idolaters. Some of them used to abuse themselves of mankind. But what did they do, brothers and sisters? They repented. They changed their lifestyle. They changed and they started keeping the commandments of God. Read. And such were some of you. Mm -hmm. But ye are watched, but but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, mm -hmm. but, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. But ye are washed, ye are washed and sanctified in the name of Jesus. Meaning these men believed on Jesus, and these men were keeping the commandments. Okay. That's the only way we're going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's the only way. And those of you who continue, who want to continue in your lifestyle, this is what's going to happen. Get me Revelation 22, verse 14. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 22, and verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Bless are they that do, here's that word do again, two-letter word, big meaning. Bless are they that do his commandments. Read. That they might have right into the tree of life. That they might have what? Right into the tree of life. That they might have right into the tree of life. Go ahead. And may enter. In through the gates into the city. Uh-oh. So what's going to permit them to enter into the gates of the city, meaning the kingdom of heaven? Read it again from the beginning. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Those that do his commandments. You brothers and sisters in Sierra Leone who decide to wake up, realize you are the Israelites, accept that um, Jesus Christ is a black man who died for you and I, died for the nation of Israel only, and you come back to your God, your power, your Elohim, your Adonai, you come back to the Lord God and keep his commandments, it says, blessed will you be. Blessed are they that do his commandments, for they shall have right to the tree of life. Read. Verse 15. For without are dogs. For without, for without are dogs. Meaning those on the outside are dogs dogs why were they dogs because they returned right back to their own vomit there were dogs licking off the crumbs of of their pastors taking in false doctrine dogs just equates to sinners they were dogs read and sorcerers uh-oh witchcraft for you obia brothers of sierra leone you obia sisters of sierra leone who love witchcraft, you love going to the voodoo doctors, especially you business entrepreneurs, you people who own businesses in Sierra Leone, we heard about you. Going to the witch doctors to sacrifice little boys, little girls, burying them under your property, wherever your business is, thinking that that's going to make your business flourish. Not only in Sierra Leone, but in Uganda, Ghana, you got a whole bunch of witch doctors in Africa. Guess what? That hellfire is coming for you if you don't repent. The Most High is coming for your head if you don't repent. Read. And whoremongers. Whoremongers, you brothers that can't keep your penis in your pants. You can't keep your penis in your pants. You're hopping from woman to woman. Go ahead. And murderers. And what? Murderers. And murderers. You brothers that have an evil killing spirit on you. You have hatred for your brother. And those who kill your brother physically. Go ahead. 
and idolaters. And idolaters. Notice the same words are being used that Paul spoke about in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. Now he says, and idolaters. We discussed that already, right? Yes. Goes into religion. Religion. That's a form of idolatry. Some of you, your wife's, your wife is your idol. Some of you, your husband is your idol. You put them before God. Some of you put your car before God. Some of you put your penis before God. Some, <laughs> some of you women, you put your vagina before God. Yeah. Anything yeah. you idolize more than the most high, you are in idolatry. And that goes for each and every one of us. Go ahead. And whatsoever love it and make it a lie. And whatsoever loveth and maketh a lie. So that's, that excludes your Mazungu Edomite white man. He loves to make a lie. What's the lie? That we are niggas. We are Negroes. We are African. That's a lie. What's another lie? That the white man in Israel is the real Jew when he's not. Okay? What's another lie? God is white. The angels are white. What's another lie? That he's the original Christian. He's a Christian. No, the Bible calls him Esau. So whoever loveth to make it a lie, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, that's so the, right. so the right. only the only people that's going to be permitted into the kingdom of God are those who keep the commandments. Get me Romans chapter 14, verse 12, and then we're going to open up the phone lines. Romans chapter 14 and verse 12. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. That's all you Romans. I'm sorry. Uh, Revelation. I'm thinking of Paul. Let's stick to Christ. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Oh, praise you. My bad. My bad. I'm usually getting on office of David because he's the one that be messing up. I messed up this time. Go ahead. Revelation 14, verse 12. This is the book of Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Here is the patient of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. You hear that? Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Go ahead. And the faith of Jesus. And the faith of Jesus. So if you have faith in Jesus, if you say that you're washed in the blood of Jesus, you'll be keeping his commandments. Because remember what Christ told us, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. You see how simple that is, brothers and sisters? Brothers and sisters of Sierra Leone, please call in. Please call into the show if you have any questions. Yeah, hello? hello? Yes, um, uh, what's your name, Christian? Yeah, good evening. Yes, good evening. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, good evening. Yes, good evening. So what is your question? Yeah, yeah please. Please. Come again. Please. Oh, okay, yes, yes. So what's your name, Christian? Yeah. Uh, I want to say that before you guys and uh, the show you guys have been doing this all, this is beautiful. I love it all. All praises. You know, uh, the black consciousness and uh, what we are visualizing all. But I got a few questions that I want to ask. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, you know the black race, you know, there are some people that are uh, the, the Fulani, not the Fulani. Uh -huh. And uh, according to what I've been researching, they're not uh, part of the Israelite. They're not. So, some people, what, what really. What they do to gain the kingdom of God because they are not part of Israel and they are not uh, part of uh, the blood of Christ. You know, how to speak like that, you know. So what are those people left with? Because they're just like the white man, you know. Uh -huh. So what can they do to seek the face of God? Oh, you mean you, you, you? Are you asking about the Fulani people? Yeah, the Fulani. You know, they are not part of. According to my research that I did into the church, uh -huh. you know, in Israel, you know, like that. Uh huh. Uh, Okay, I'm going to I'll, I'm going to ask your question to Captain. I'll put it to us to the Captain. He's going to he's going to edify us um, uh, 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 um, to to let you know. As do you have more questions, or that's the only question? No, that's one of the questions that I had. Okay. 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 Um, while we are waiting for your calls, we'll just go over to the Captain. So um, Captain Isaac can give us an understanding of this question. Um, Captain, uh, we have a caller, Captain Isaac. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, um, we have a caller. Yeah, I heard, yeah. His, uh, I heard his question. 
Okay, okay, good. So okay. he wanted to know so, if the flat, flat lay where. Okay. Well, so the, he. Well, let me just say this way: he he didn't. He actually concluded that the Fulanese are not part of the uh, children of Israel, and then he was asking, "How can they be um, be saved or make it?" Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is a quick answer, right? This is not that hard to understand. The Fulani people are one of the largest ethnic tribes in in um, Africa, one of the largest ethnic tribes. And you also have the Bantus. Now, uh, alleged, allegedly, they say that their origin came from Northeast Africa. We all know Israel is in Northeast Africa. They also say that their origin came somewhere from the Jordan River. The Jordan River is not too far from Israel. Now, let's say they are Ham. Let's say they are Hamitic and not Shemitic. The Fulani inter intermingled amongst the Shemitic tribes of Africa, uh, mainly the Bantus, who we know are Israelites. So the seed of Ham and Shem mixed together. So we can't go around and say, somebody might say, I'm Fulani, just because they practice Muslim, because we know 96% of Fulanis follow Islam, right? Just because somebody say, oh, I'm Fulani, we can't say you're not an Israelite. Christ said, my sheep hear my voice. And that's, that's what, right. And that's what we have to stand on. The seed of Israel is scattered everywhere, brothers and sisters. It's not only scattered in Africa. Guess what? It's scattered in India, Vietnam. It's, it's scattered everywhere. We have to be very careful. We can't point out one sect, one tribe, and say, hey, these guys are not Israelites at all, because the seed has the seed of Israel has been scattered everywhere. Christ said, my sheep hear my voice, and that's what we're going to um, stand on. Now, we do know there's Nihilotics, full-bred, hermetic Nihilotes, or Nihilotics, their ham, but a lot of the Nihilotics intermingled with um, Israel. That's right. So now you, you're really going to go back and test everybody's father. You're going to have to do a DNA test or ask you, who's your father? Who's your father? Who's your father? The seed of Israel is, is mixed everywhere. Let's just teach the word of God is going to bring them in. All right. And, and, and uh, Christ said it himself. He's, he shall separate the uh, wheat from the tear. Now, in order for Christ to tell us that and leave that in scripture, He's letting you know that when he comes back in the congregation of Israel, there's going to be wheat and tear. He's going to be doing the separating. That's not for us to do. That is not for us to do. Unless, unless somebody blatantly tells you, hey, I'm hermetic and I know I'm hermetic, but I still want to join. Then you could tell them, no, hit the road, Jack. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> you know, but that's the answer to that brother's question. Yes, so um, I hope that you have got your your the, the, the response to your question. Um, so yes, um, it does not mean that they, you are Bantu. It, it doesn't mean that uh, 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 um, you are Bantu. Uh, sorry, you are Fulani. It means that you cannot make it to the kingdom of God because the seed has been mixed over time, as the captain said, and um, you might not know who you are. But one thing is for sure. Christ said, my sheep hear my voice. That means that if you, if this message is directed to you and you feel the urgency to make the change and to keep the laws, you are, I'll just say, part of the children of Israel. Yes. And if you just happen to be a tear, if you just happen to be a tear that endures to the end, because Christ said he's going to separate the wheat from the tear. I mean, there's going to be some tears amongst us that actually endure. Common sense will tell you that. If yeah. you just happen to be that tear, you're not going to make it. So if you just happen to be a, a, a hermetic nation that slithers in amongst us and endures into the end, you ain't going to make it. You're going into captivity, plain and simple. You're going into slavery. If you happen to be a Mazungu who makes it amongst us that looks white, an Edomite, uh, because you might have a, a black mother somewhere and you inherited her melanin and you uh, endure, you keep, you cleave, you endure some of these commandments until the end. When Christ come back, he's going to separate your Edomite behind and you ain't going to make it. So that's the answer to that. But all praise to the most side. Uh, Captain, I, I, everything that is still good for them to keep the law, because in the kingdom, 
they are still going to be forced to keep the law. So it will be an advantage for them exactly. to make it. Exactly. Yeah, so. it, it. Exactly. It's an advantage. So if you do happen to slither in amongst the nation of Israel, um, it would behoove you to keep the, these commandments. Even those of you, even, hey, I'm going to go so far to say this. Those of you who know for sure that you're not an Israelite, and you're following these religions, come out of these religions and keep the commandments anyway. That's right. Keep the commandments anyway, so that when the kingdom is established, you'll be a good servant to us, the Israelites. That's okay? right. And your job will be that much easier because you're rehearsing the righteous acts and you'll be, you'll be perfect servants in the kingdom of heaven. So keep the commandments anyway. Uh, I want to bring out, do you have another call? I want to bring out one last scripture before we close out. We, we, yeah. have, we have a call. Okay. Yeah, hello? Yes? Come again? Yes, hello? Yes, your, your, your name and your question. Yes, what is your question? Okay, okay, brother, what's your question? Come again. Okay, so you're a Muslim and you want to convert into Christian. What is the criteria? Okay, he says he's a Muslim and he wants to convert into Christian. What is the criteria for him to convert from Muslim oh, that's, to Christian? That is beautiful, brother. Leave that Muslim religion alone. It is not for the children of Israel. It is a good, it's good for the Arabs, but it's not good for us. Okay? So uh, you can follow us. Follow us at IsraelUnite.org. If you're, if I'm, I assume you're from Sierra Leone because you're calling on the yeah. Sierra Leone radio show. We have a school. Give them the address. Yeah, so definitely... Also, also, just so you know, um, when you say Christian, just so you know, yes. I hope you are not talking about the Christianity in the world because yes. we are we are not Christianity according to the uh, the, 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 the I'll just put it like this: the um, doctrine taught by the school of theology. We are Christian. We are Christians based after Christ. That's um, the, 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 the scriptures are as it is written. Yes, so, we are we are the Israelites. So if you, I hope you're not talking about modern day Christianity. We are the Israelites, also known as Christians, because we're Christ followers. But if you would like to join us, um, yes. David, give him the information. Yes, sir. Um, like if you want to meet us, you can come to Modern School every two. That's two fifteen at uh, Modern School. We or we'll always have somebody out there to receive you. You can call us on the number. Uh, this is our personal number, which you can reach us through. I will also have WhatsApp groups that will, will be able to add you on these WhatsApp groups for you to partake in and ask more questions. During, like, even those who have not asked questions today, you can always write us there. Uh, the number is 80 597046 80 597046 Yes, um, Captain, the scripture you wanted to bring out. Yes. Uh, get me uh, Hebrews. Yeah, Hebrews 11, I believe it is. And I think it's verse uh, 24. Um, I'm sorry, Hebrews 10, verse... Um, let's start at verse 26. Hebrews 10, verse 26. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, and verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth is that we are the Israelites and we must keep God's commandments in the faith of Christ, our black Messiah. Go ahead. There remained no more sacrifice for sin. So this is the, whole, the reason I'm bringing this out is to show you that the commandments are still in effect. And sin, transgression of the law, is still in effect. Go ahead. But a certain fearful looking for a judgment and fury in indignation, mm -hmm. which shall the which shall devour, which shall devour the adversaries. 
which shall devour the adversaries. Read. Verse 28. He that despised Moses' law. He that despised the commandments in the book of Moses, the law of Moses. Go ahead. Died without mercy under two or three witnesses. So he that despised Moses' laws died without mercy under two or three witnesses. There were certain sins that if you committed, you were worthy of death. One example is adultery. Another is idolatry. You could not repent for that. You were stoned and put to death. Go ahead. Verse 29. Of how much sore punishment? Now, how much more sore punishment? Those of you in these churches, those of you in these mosques that walk around in idolatry, and then you say, oh, I don't have to keep the commandments of God. I just got to have faith on Christ. But if you had faith on Christ, you would be keeping the commandments of God. So of how much more sorrow punishment, go ahead. Suppose ye, shall ye be um, thought worthy? Shall he be thought worthy? Go ahead. Who had trodden under foot the son of god go ahead and had counted the blood of the covenant so you tramp when you continue in sin brothers and sisters god says you trampled under the foot the son of god and the blood of of the covenant meaning his sacrifice that he died for you was in vain you make it as if in vain it were it meant nothing to you because you're continuing to sin willfully go ahead Wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and had done despised unto the spirit of grace. Go ahead. Verse 30. For we know him that had said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. Read. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Read on. Verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fail into the hands of the living God. You hear that? I wanted to close it out on that. Brothers and sisters, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hand of the living God. So brothers and sisters, let's please keep these commandments of God. Return back to the Bible as the Israelites. You sisters, keep the commandments of God. Return back to the Bible as the Israelites. Because you are those Israelites. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hand of the living God. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.